This is Lauren Anderson, CEO of YBM Agency and contributor to FinancialJuneteenth.com. Today, I am interviewing Anthony Fletcher, who is the owner and CEO of My Future Consulting. And we are going to learn quite a deal about what he does, how he does it, and why he does it. Anthony, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Yeah, so it's such a pleasure to be speaking with you. You know, we have a relationship from uh, recruitment back that spans back, you know, a few years back to Atlanta. So definitely good to be uh, in touch and, and seeing you again. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, share a little bit about my organization. So thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. So tell me, um, give us an intro. Who, who are you? So my name is Anthony Fletcher. Uh, as you've stated, business owner for My Future Consulting Incorporated. We're located in Orland Park, Illinois, which is right outside of Chicago. Uh, we've been in business dating back to 2007. Uh, and so we started in Richmond, Virginia. In the last five years, we've uh, been in the Chicago land area. Wow. And so, what is My Future Consulting? Okay, so we're an executive search and recruitment firm. And don't let the word executive throw you off. It tends to throw folks off. Uh, they conclude that we only recruit for executives. Uh, but the reality is we assist corporations and institutions across the U.S. with their recruitment efforts, uh, primarily white-collar positions, anything from entry-level management roles uh, all the way to executive-level roles. So areas such as accounting and finance, uh, we, we do a uh, human resources, uh, we also cover supply chain management, engineering, sales and marketing, uh, and I can go on and on. Um, but we have a vast area that we tend to cover uh, and support those companies, uh, again, throughout the U.S. in varying industries. Uh, the, in our core industries that we tend to play most in is consumer packaged goods, hospitality, uh, financial services, and pharmaceuticals. Quite a span, uh, you know, of, of types of positions that you guys are recruiting for. I'm sure that that, um, you know, ends up being something that equates to a, a good return on investment for you in regard to profiting from the business. Can you tell me um, how profitable this type of business can be for someone who may be aspiring to start a recruitment agency or just interested in that information? Uh, it's extremely profitable. Uh, you, you know, it's interesting. We, uh, the first year we started going into our second year, we were actually, our revenues increased almost 300%. Uh, last year, revenues increased 75%. So we've been very fortunate uh, to be given the opportunity to work with some very credible, highly revered companies uh, throughout the U.S. And so my very first contract was with Nestle. Um, and it came as a complete shock and surprise. I, I was out at a conference and met a very nice young lady, um, made a pitch and didn't think she would accept it, and she did, and I had to run back home and start doing a lot of work. Uh, <laughs> and at that time, what we call a solopreneur, not an entrepreneur, I was doing everything myself. So you'd imagine that uh, it, it was very challenging, but yet uh, extremely, extremely rewarding. Um, but the industry as a whole has been around forever. Uh, most folks know it as headhunters, that's what we do with third-party recruiters. And so the fees for placements can range anywhere from 20 to 35% uh, per placement. So when you take a look at a person as an example uh, that may make $100,000 <clears> salary, if we charge a fee of 25%, we get a $25,000 payout for finding uh, that talented professional to fill that critical role uh, for that particular organization. So, um, but it's not easy. Uh, it's, it's, it's extremely challenging, as you would imagine, I'm sure, Lauren, you've been on the receiving end of many phone calls where recruiters and other companies have tried to solicit and secure your services, um, and you may have said yes to some and no to many, um, but it's not very easy to get individuals to move or relocate potentially from one location to the next to fill a row. So I don't want to mislead anyone to believe that you can go out and fill five jobs next week and make 125000 It's not that easy. Um, and they also the key is partnering with the right organization, the organizations that not just view you as uh, a, requisition, a requisition filler, but more of a partner. 
So they want to know your thoughts and your insights and your perspectives on what's going on with the industry. What does the ideal profile look like for a particular role that we're trying to fill? Um, when we partner with companies that are open-minded and give us a voice in the decisions, we see our success rate go through tremendous. Um, and, and the opposite occurs, obviously, when you when you don't, right? Um, when you just, hey, fill a job rec, you submit candidates, you get that no, this is not the one, and it's very frustrating sometimes. But overall, the business, um, the industry is ex extremely profitable. There are very, very few true minority-owned uh, executive search firms. When I say there, there are many that classify themselves as a minority and they're women-driven, it could be a Caucasian woman that that is certified as a minority-owned business. But when you talk about African-Americans mm -hmm. actually owning and leading an executive search firm in the, which going on nine years that I've been in the business, I may have met six or seven. So, uh, uh, so tell me about the decision uh, that led up to you creating My Future Consulting. I mean, instead of you know going to one of these large corporations and being an executive recruiter, or um, you know being a di director of talent acquisition, or or some fancy title like that, instead you've chosen to create your own business and you found a niche um, as a minority-owned business and you've been very successful. So tell me about the journey to making that decision? Wow, that's a great question. <laughs> Let me start by saying I never envisioned myself being an entrepreneur. I thought I would graduate from college, hook on with a, a, a highly successful uh, and profitable Fortune 500 company and retire 30 years later. Um, because I did in fact work in corporate for right at 20 years had a very, very successful career in manufacturing and in sales. What was interesting is that my degree is in HR and I never worked the first day in HR when I was in corporate. Yeah. Sales, manufacturing. Uh, the first company that I was hired on with had a requirement for HR professionals that you spend at least two years in manufacturing so that you better understand that process thinking that you can extend greater support if you understand the profile of the individuals that you'll be supporting and recruiting for. For me, I had a great start, and so uh, I began uh, advancing within that functional area, um, and I enjoyed it. The money was good, so that's where I stayed. But I still had this passion around HR, particularly around connecting organizations. And so, fast forward as I, around year 17, you know, I noticed that there's a particular company that we were work that I was working for that actually had a relationship with a third party recruitment firm. And this third party recruitment firm, you know, kind of tabbed themselves as being the very best in the industry. And I walked away very disappointed. Uh, I don't know if my expectations were too high or not, but I walked away pretty disappointed in their processes quality of candidates they, they were delivering, and I started thinking, like, wow, if they're the best, now I may never make it to be entitled the best, but if they're the best and we're paying those kind of fees, I can certainly make a good living doing this. And so I started doing more and more research on the industry and what was required uh, uh, to be successful uh, from a business model standpoint and also uh, from a resource standpoint. I wanted to go into, to be honest, in, a, a business that wasn't over complex. If it's too complex, it's not for me, right? And we're recruitment, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. When you look at the business model, it's we need a person to fill this role, we need you to go find them. And so you have the resources to go find a person, you present them to the organization, hopefully they like that individual, extend a job offer, the job offer is accepted and you're paid. Um, the entry fee for this type of business was, was very nominal didn't require me to go purchase a car, go purchase a lot of equipment. All I needed was a phone and a computer um, and I can get started. Uh, my money was spent, the majority of my money was spent the first year on marketing, establishing my brand, strengthening my brand so that people knew who we were when we approached and pitched our organization to them. But from, from a startup cost standpoint, it was ideal, it was perfect. 
um, and it's worked out extremely well for me. So we've, you know, I started off at home. I'll tell everyone I started off as a home-based business. Uh, it was and, and by myself, a solo, a, a, again, a solo entrepreneur, if you will, a solopreneur, that's the new terminology. Um, and after a couple of years, as the business continued to grow, uh, I began to, you know, explore uh, looking into an office space, bringing on new team members, um, and that's where we are today. So we, we have a nice office here in Orlando Park. We have a team of five individuals who do an outstanding job of supporting uh, my vision and making that vision a reality. Wow. What a great journey, you know, and I'm, I'm sure that you feel now that you made the right decision as far as walking away from corporate America and kind of diving in to get your piece of the pie from what you saw other people making. So that's a that's a great journey. Thank you for um, that information, because I'm sure, you know, entrepreneurs want to hear that, you know, as far as how how did it happen for you? How did it start so that they can take that blueprint? and try to get into the same industry. So say, you know, we're speaking to someone who also has an HR background like us, <laughs> um, and they want to start this type of company. And you hit on a great point. The branding is what's most important, right? The marketing is where you're gonna spend most of the money. Um, and that's something that they really need to be aware of. But, it, you know, it has its advantages as far as entering this type of business because it doesn't have the type of investment that's required for, you know, maybe a, a law firm, an accounting agency, or something like that. So um, right. thanks for that information. Tell me, in your experience, um, you know, with reviewing positions that are offered to you through corporations, what do you feel is the most um, valuable skill set right now um, that companies are seeking from employees or potential employees? That's a great question. Uh, you know, when you, when, you, when you conduct what we call an intake meeting, and that intake meeting is when an employer or client says, hey, we want this particular job filled, and you sit down and really talk about what are really the most critical skill sets, right? You like to say, I want everything, right? But when it boils down to it, what are the most critical skill sets that are, are necessary to be successful in this role that we're recruiting for? And I'll tell you, Laura, consistently, consistently, and I can vouch for it because I was in corporate for 17, 18 years, communication skills mm. are key. Because the thought is, if you can communicate well, both vertically and horizontally, horizontally, we can train you. Yeah. We, we can teach you the business, but if you can't communicate, if you don't have good listening skills, if you feel that, hey, I can talk down to individuals, but I can't make that presentation to my boss or my boss's boss, you'll struggle. Uh, particularly at the for the level positions that we tend to recruit for, um, probably 70% of the jobs that we recruit for are going to be your managerial and director level and above positions. And so the communication piece is critical because when you walk into that organization, more than likely you'll be leading. Communication skills aren't sufficient. You won't be able to lead effectively. And so um, or, or interview. So let's go back. Like before you can get the job, if you're, if you're not able to communicate effectively, even during the interview process, you don't even get the opportunity to secure the job. And so you will be surprised, and I was shocked, the, the amount of time that we invest in coaching director level and above on how to effectively communicate during an interview. And you would think they're super intelligent, they're accomplished, going through an interim process in decades. So if you think back on your experience, or think back on my experience in corporate, if you came in at the entry level and you were promoted up, it was based on your current or your previous year's performance. So you didn't have to go, quote unquote, interview for the job. Right. So now it's eight years, you're no longer with that company, you've been displaced, you've you were just grown, you think it's time to move on. And so now you begin to uh, explore and entertain external opportunities. For many, it's the first time they've interviewed in 10, 15 years. And so they really, really struggle with that process. And it has nothing to do with level of intelligence. You know, interviewing is a skill. Mm -hmm. And so we spend a lot of time uh, coaching our candidates. And I think that's why we have a this huge pipeline of candidates, the word has kind of gotten out there that this 
this organization can help you achieve, you know, your career goals. And it's because we spend an inordinate amount of time trying to coach them and set them up for success. I think that's that's important, you know, um, the grooming and the coaching for the, you know, for the candidates to to be a right fit for the culture of the organization and definitely, you know, like you said, to effectively communicate. I think what's important um, to know is that not only are you an asset to corporations, but you're also an asset to the entrepreneur, right? A lot of times entrepreneurs don't feel that human resources is absolutely necessary for them. Um, because they're not huge, you know, they don't have a, a staff of over 50 people. There's no kind of compliance that they're adhering to. But right. I think it's important um, for them to understand that a recruitment agency is an asset to an entrepreneur who has, you know, a few employees or an entrepreneur that's looking to obtain some top talent to be there, you know, perhaps their COO. So just talk to us about, you know, um, why your business is good for the entrepreneur and why they should contact you um, for their hiring needs. Okay, wow, that's a great question. You know, it, it, it's, it's funny, we have, there are so many entrepreneurs that wear every hat, not just multiple hats, but every hat. And the amount of time that's required to find the right candidate for your organization is incredible. I mean, it's not a, hey, call Anthony or call his organization on Monday, uh, partner with him uh, on a particular gyrec, and all of a sudden Wednesday it's filled. It can take three weeks to find find one out there that they're looking for. And most entrepreneurs can't commit that amount of time to just one particular uh, aspect of their business. It's in it's impossible to be quite frank with you. And I found that to be my experience firsthand when I began to staff my organization, the amount of time that it took to find my chief talent officer, to find my sourcer. And I'm thinking like, wow, I wish I had an HR person to do that, or I wish I could outsource that. But financially, I wasn't in a position to do it, so I had to do it myself. So I think that we could certainly be of benefit to those smaller organizations. And I know there's some apprehension initially around paying fees, but the investment will pay huge dividends uh, in the long run. And so those small organizations that we have supported and partnered with have come back and said, wow, that was the best. Because one, I don't even know what skill sets I should be looking for. That's your area of expertise. All I know is I have an open, a void in my, in my staffing of my organization and I need to get it filled. And you're the guy that can fill it. And so ideally, here's what we're looking for. Run with that, Anthony. Come back and present to us an A-list candidate. And that's what we've done. But the amount of time that it saves that entrepreneur who's managing, I mean, nine, 10 things, just juggling balls, different balls every day, all day, um, that's one less headache that they have to worry about when they partner with us. That, is, that was actually a great question there because oftentimes, People don't think that the smaller boutique or companies need our assistance. And the fact is they probably need more so than some of the larger firms. Yeah, I would certainly agree with you on that. Definitely. So tell us where um, we can find you, Anthony. Where can uh, these entrepreneurs look you up? What's your website, your social media, um, LinkedIn, et cetera? Okay. So you can definitely find me on LinkedIn. Uh, me as an individual, Anthony Fletcher. Um, we also have a company page, so it's My Future Consulting. Our website is www.myfutureconsulting.com. No space is all one word, if you will, www.myfutureconsulting.com. Uh, uh, we also have a Facebook page with My Future Consulting uh, as well. So we're very active and engaged on social media. Uh, it's one of our uh, primary venues, if you will, to connecting and growing our connected with our candidates and growing our pipeline. So you can find us there, or you can give us a call at area code 708-428-6462. And again, the number is 708-428-6462.
Excellent, excellent. So I'm certain that you'll have an increase of inquiries from entrepreneurs that perhaps want to get your advice or want a consultation as far as uh, how to effectively communicate to obtain uh, their business goals. So thank you so much for your time today and for the information that you've provided to us. And uh, we definitely support minority-owned businesses and what you're doing, and especially within the field of human resources. Thank you for your contributions. And it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Lauren. I appreciate the time that you've afforded me today to talk a little bit about what we do. And and we have an open entrepreneurs uh, any individuals that are contemplating becoming an entrepreneur please 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 give me a call i receive them quite often and uh, take great joy in being able to share my knowledge and my perspective in hopes that it can help them grow their business and achieve their dreams excellent it's been a pleasure anthony all right thank you lauren bye-bye